We have made it, folks. We are on to the fifth entry in the Death Wish franchise. Let's talk about it. Hey, welcome back to my channel. Hope everyone is doing well out there. And today we've made it to the fifth and final Charles Bronson installment of the Death Wish franchise. This was the last Death Wish film and last theatrical film for Charles Bronson, unfortunately. Until the remake that came out in 2018 with Bruce Willis, which I will do a review for that. It'll be out later this week or early next week. And then I'm going to do a couple Christmas reviews. And then I'm going to take some time off until the new year. And I'll kick it back into high gear after the new year holiday. Um, for doing some more movie reviews. And maybe we'll do some more canon reviews once we get into the new year. We'll see. Um, and I've had requests for some other reviews. I'm going to get on to those as well. But today we're talking about Death Wish 5, The Face of Death. This film came out January 14th of 1994. It's rated R, as all the other Death Wish films are. It's an hour and 35 minutes long, and it had a $5 million budget, and upon release, it only made $1.7. This film got a limited theatrical release in the United States, and in many territories, it got went straight to video. Now, Mannheim Golan, who was half of the team that had the Canon Film Group, in 1989, Canon Films filed for bankruptcy, so they were no longer around. Mannheim Golan went on and started a, another film company called 21st Century Film Corp. And he, they, he followed a lot of the same model as the Canon Group. They Low-budget pictures, he wasn't doing very well. A lot of the pictures were not making a lot of money. So in 93, he decided, well, I need a hit. Let's do another Death Wish film. Because there hadn't been a Death Wish, Death Wish film since 87 when Death Wish 4, The Crackdown, came out. Um, so... He went to Charles Bronson, and Charles Bronson agreed to do another film. They paid him $5 million to do another film. And they, Michael Winner was around and available at the time, but they didn't offer him the, the job to direct this film because of his disinterest in doing part four. So they went to a gentleman by the name of Alan Goldstein, and he wrote and directed this film. Charles Bronson's back as Paul Kersey. He does have a different name in this film that he's using, but we're just going to call him Paul Kersey because that's his name. Uh, Michael Parks is Tommy O'Shea. He is the gangster in this film, and Michael Parks is always entertaining in any film he's ever been in. And he's entertaining as hell here, and he's chewing the shit out of the scenery, and that's why we love him. Um, Robert Joy's in this film is Freddie Flakes. He is an enforcer for Tommy O'Shea, and Robert Joy is a very strong actor, and I always like seeing him on, string, str on screen as well. And Kenneth Welsh is in, in this film as Lieutenant King, and he works for the police department, obviously. Now, the reason they got the money to make this film was that Mannheim Golan sold off the international distribution rights, and that's how he got the money to make this film. Um, at the time, they were struggling, and they needed a hit. That's why they went back to the Death Wish well, because he still had the rights to it. So he figured this could be a hit, because all the other ones were still making money on video. So here we are. Now, Charles Bronson was 71 when they made this film in 93, and this ended up being his final theatrical film. Um... Now, this film it was shot, it takes place in New York City, but it was shot in Toronto because of budgetary reasons. It was cheaper to film in, Tor in Canada at that point. But you could tell, Death Wish 4, the scenes were starting to show. Now, that film is still fun. It's not one of, it's definitely, out of the first four, is my least favorite out of the first four. But you, there's still some good action scenes in there, and Charles Bronson's good. But you can see, that, and J. Lee Thompson does fine with the directing, even though you can see that the budget wasn't there to pull off some of the scenes they wanted to pull off. Well, this film looks even cheaper than part four. Because $5 million didn't go quite as far in 94 as it did back in 87. And this film just looks cheap from the get-go. From the lighting scheme to the sets, it looks cheap. As a matter of fact, they use a lot of horror movie lighting in this film, which is kind of bizarre for an action film or action thriller. There's a lot of blue light throughout this film. It looks like it's a freaking horror film throughout the whole... The lighting is definitely right out of a horror film. But everything looks cheap in this film, like you could tell. Now, some of the action scenes are fun, but this is definitely, I'm going to say up front, my least favorite of the franchise. We're, we were reintroduced to Paul Kersey. He has a new girlfriend who has a young daughter, and they live in New York City, and his new girlfriend is a fashion designer. And at the beginning of the film, when we're reintroduced to um, Paul Kersey, she's having a benefit fashion show and michael park shows up his character because he used to be married to her and that's his daughter that's living with paul kersey now and her and he's not happy and he's trying to strong on arm her because he is a gangster and basically he has her attacked by in a restaurant after this 
Paul Kersey just proposed to her. She goes to the bathroom and Robert Joy dresses up in a woman's clothing, goes in and smashes her face in the mirror, messes her up. And soon after that, she gets killed in a shootout at her house. Paul Kersey survives and he decides to go back to his old ways of taking vengeance on people that have done him wrong or loved ones of his. So he starts taking out um, Tommy O'Shea's men in pretty creative fashion. There's a couple cool scenes. Robert Joy's death is pretty damn cool. I enjoyed that one. Um, now, the problem is, by this point, um, Charles Bronson was 71, and it shows during the action scenes when he's running or that you could tell he's older, he's an older man, he can't move like he used to. And it, it was hard for him to hide it, and you could tell they used a the stunt double a lot more in this film. They were asking for more stunts, definitely, and there was, you could tell when the stunt double's on screen, they don't hide it very well. And basically, it's the same old Death Wish, you know, story. At, by the end of the film, there's a major shootout at the clothing factory, and Paul Kersey ends up killing Tommy O'Shea, and the cop, played by Kenneth Welsh, lets Paul Kersey go and covers for him, and he walks off, and it's the end of the film, and that is Death Wish 5, in a nutshell. This film's okay. Um, watching it again, it's my first time, watching it last night was the first time I've seen this film in a long time. I had to buy it on DVD to see it, because it's not available on digital, I couldn't find it. I bought the DVD on eBay for like 7 bucks, brand new, and unfortunately it was in full screen, which I hate, I absolutely hate that, I don't even know why any studio would release a film in full screen, but it was. But even with it being in full screen, this movie's not shot the greatest. I mean, there's some nicely shot action scenes. Uh, the director obviously loves slow-mo, because every action scene almost takes place in slow-mo, or when somebody's about to get killed. It's definitely a little bit more over the top than some of the other ones. Um, and Paul Kersey cannot get hit by bullets to save the bad guy's lives um, in this film. But you can still have there's some decent action scenes from here, here and there. Um, the story is just really basic. It, Charles Bronson does okay with what he has to do at his age. Um, it's okay. Michael Parks is entertaining as hell. But at the end of the day, this is my least favorite Death Wish film. You could tell... This was just made to make a hit movie, which I know the other ones were too, but I always felt like the directors and Bronson were trying to make a really good film here. It just, it looks like everybody's kind of just going through the motions and trying to make an okay film to make some money. I'm not saying that's what Bronson was doing, but you could tell he was an older man and he was just there probably for the paycheck other than that. Um, because him and Golan weren't even t on speaking terms during this film. Um, they would go through the director to speak to each other. They, they would not talk to each other face to face. So there was definitely bad blood. And it was actually plans to make another Death Wish film and introduce a younger vigilante because they realized Bronson was getting older. I guess he was going to pass the torch in this film from what I read. And Bronson wouldn't even do it at that point. He was he never did another film after this anyway. But he, he didn't even want to talk to Golan about it, so they never made it. And then 21st Century Film Corps went out of business anyway um, because of so many failures in a row. But I would give Death Wish 5 a 5.5 out of 10. There are some interesting parts to it. There's some fun moments during the film. But everything is just... Some of the other actors in the film aren't the greatest besides the ones I mentioned. And it looks cheap. It's not... I would say this is definitely the worst directed film out of the series, in my opinion. It's not the most awful thing I've ever seen. But it's definitely the worst directed film. It looks cheap. And it's just okay. I give it a 5.5 out of 10 for Death Wish 5, The Face of Death. Have you ever seen this film? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. That wraps up our Charles Bronson portion of Death Wish franchise. I will do the remake with Bruce Willis. It will be out either the end of the week or next week. And then I'm going to do Home Alone 1 and 2 for my Christmas movie reviews. I hope everyone's doing well out there. Leave a comment down below on this film if you've ever seen it, what your thoughts are. Hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, share this video, all that great fun stuff. Hope everyone's doing well out there, and I'll be back soon. Thanks. See you soon. Bye.